G'day world, I'm Coram E from Fly on E Electric Aviation. Yes, that's right, that electric plane guy. And you guessed it, today I'm in the Pit Patrol Alpha Electro, gonna flip the camera here. And what I wanna show you here today in the last light of the day with the Pit Patrol Alpha Electro all electric plane, which we get a little bit of data up on screen here to see where we are in Perth, Western Australia. I'm gonna show you how quiet the Pipistrel Alpha Electro is. So we're actually at 100% battery here and the plane's not gonna be flown for a few. And they tell me it is good to bring the battery level down a little bit and not store it at 100%. So we're actually gonna do some run-ups on the apron here. Flip that camera again. And uh, we're just gonna do some run-ups to consume a little bit of power and bring this back down from 100%. But perfect opportunity to show you all how quiet the Alpha is. So what I'm gonna do here is just engage. Everything. Woo, and get a mild spin on the prop. So we're there at a very, very moderate level. We've got just a gentle fanning going. Mmm. Mmm. How's that breeze? So just to make sure everything's free and clear and operating, we're going to do a couple of our checks, which is to make sure that we've got a change in the coolant temperature, which indicates that the coolant is in fact flowing. So this is our data page on the system menu here. So we've got our flight data, which is the most important stuff, battery capacity, kilowatt consumption, RPM. Uh, we've got our temperature levels indicated here, and this is our faults and warnings section. This should be free and clear. And we've also got our volts uh, standard there. It's charging the auxiliary battery at present. That was a mouthful. Don't know why I mixed that up. Now, we're not going anywhere, so I'm gonna leave the nav lights switched off, and we're just on the apron quietly running up a little bit now. As you can hear, the, the prop's still turning now, and is making almost zero noise. We're gonna shut the cabin door, because I'm gonna run it up close to cruise speed, uh, cruise speed, close to cruise power. And we're gonna see what it sounds like. So we're gonna chew through a little bit of energy here to bring this, to bring this 100% down to anything else. So we're gonna run up a little bit here and see what we've got. So park brake is definitely engaged, nice and firm. We're not going anywhere. We've cleared prop, we're free and clear to do apply a little bit of power. Now, what's exciting about this is, I'm not wearing a headset, and I'm not gonna wear a headset for the entirety of this, and we're just gonna hear the audio raw off the camera to give you an idea of the noise difference. So, uh, there's a little bit of noise, of course, because there's a big propeller moving a whole bunch of air, but much, much less than you would experience if you were in a combustion engine aircraft. Put that camera again, all right. So we've got our prop turning here. We're con currently consuming two kilowatts of power and I'm gonna bring the power up to our uh, cruise power consumption, which is a bit over 20 kilowatts. All right, so now we've got a bit of activity. Let's go wide. There we go. going on which is totally amazing you, can, you could fly this plane without a headset in the right airspace and listen to the radio on the included speaker now we're still sitting at 21 net. we're going to double check our system information our coolant is moving nicely and doing its job everything looks stable everything's at correct voltages Back to our flight menu. Everything's looking fantastic there. Flight, we're at 680 RPM and 21 kilowatt. So we're just cruising along now. If we were in the air, we'd be at 85 knots having a great time. And it'd actually be a little bit quieter if we were flying. At the moment, we're getting a 
lot of turbulence off the prop itself, which is adding a little bit of noise at the wing tip. But the cruise in flight, it'll just be a touch quieter again. That's 21 kilowatts of cruise. Oh, we got some <laughs> spectators in the background. I should probably let them know what's going on. All right, slight sojourn, and uh, our friends have put away their beautiful aircraft here. So we're back out on the apron to let it rip again. Okay, so we're back in the aircraft. Uh, we've spooled up, we're spinning now at about 11 or 12 kilowatts. This wouldn't quite be enough to cruise and fly. Um, we flip the camera here and show you where we're at. So we've got some RPM, we've got 12 kilowatts of consumption. The battery still hasn't moved at all, but we'll get some activity there soon. All of our temps are in within operational range. You can see the, uh, the exceeding marks there, but everything is A-OK. -okay. And now we'll flip over to our system page and have a little bit of a look. All right, so our coolant is in motion. Uh, so we know it's flowing and doing its work. Now you might be wondering why does the electric aircraft have coolant? Well, the electric motors can get very hot. They, have, they are a water-cooled motor still and there's a small radiator under the prop, oh, sorry, behind the prop, under the engine motor, not an engine. And uh, that's circulating coolant through the motor to help keep it cool. The byproduct of turning stored electrical energy into motion, unfortunately, is heat. And we have to clear that heat out, particularly on climb when the, end, the motor is working very, very hard on your initial climb up out of the airport or aerodrome or airstrip it's going to be generating a bit of heat and needs to clear. When you're in cruise, not so much. So we're going to spool up a little bit more power again, get back to uh, cruise level of power or maybe a little bit above because I want to actually see a bit of movement on the battery meter. I need to bring it down before I store the aircraft for a couple of days. So let's flip that camera again and see what we got here. So we're going to come back to our power system level so I can see what's going on. We're going to power up Let's get up all the way to cruise power. All right, so 22 kilowatts consumption, 1650 RPM. Pressures are, sorry, pressures, temps and pressures. See, you get in these habits. My instructor taught me well. And no pressures, just temps, but we will check our coolant system. Make sure coolant is flowing. We've got temperature change there, so it definitely is. We're all looking good. Don't worry about this little guy. We're just waiting on a software update. <laughs> so we're going to crank a little bit more power now. A bit above cruise power. And about 28 kilowatts is as far as I want to go before we start stretching the capabilities of these amazing Behringer brakes. So that's 28 kilowatts, well above cruise power, and still just recording audio from the phone without a headset. It's comfortable enough to talk. We're gonna bring that back down a little bit. Back to cruise power there. And there we have it. Now I'm gonna bring it back completely to idle. And idle, of course, in the Pipistrel Alpha Electro, Electro is zero. Now, if we were currently flying and we were back to idle, uh, the power position all the way in the back position, then uh, we would be now regenerating energy. So one of the of the Pipistrel Alpha Electro, something that you can never ever do with a combustion engine, is on the descent, on your approach to your airfield or aerodrome, you are regenerating power from your altitude level and you're able to regenerate maybe up to about 13% of the energy that you used on your climb. So for flight training applications and doing circuits, you're actually regenerating a fair bit of energy every time you come down in the descent on your final, uh, which is amazing. On your base and final, you're regenerating energy the whole way down, which makes it a little bit safer for an emergency go around if you need a bit extra power to do so. Uh, so that's it, that's the uh, Pipistrel Alpha internal cabin sound better than a combustion engine. We've got a beautiful sunset coming on in Perth, Western Australia. Unfortunately, with all these hangars around, I won't be able to see a lot of it, but I can see a fair bit out of this amazing cockpit view from inside the Pipistrel. There's heaps of room and uh, glasses you can see to look down at the world beneath you when you're flying. 
uh, but we're just uh, stuck here in the apron at the moment doing a few tests and you can see I still haven't used any power on the battery meter so I'm um, just sit here and let this run for a while and uh, See if we can get that battery meter down a little bit. The Pipistrel has amazing energy capacity and capabilities and can fly for a considerable amount of time on, on battery power, as you can see. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here for a while, letting that spool up and letting that run down. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something about electric planes. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. Check out the website, www.flyone.com.au. Follow us on all the socials, of course. We want to be able to communicate the whole electric aviation revolution to you as we continue adding more and more electric aircraft in Western Australia to operate on Australia's first electric aviation network. We have a couple of charge nodes active and ready now, and we'll be flying uh, more demonstration flights to those in the future. So hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. I want to see you here again soon.